ready, you may start Okay. Hello, my name is Will Allen, and for my capstone, I decided to study the tunnel fire's effects on Northern Arizona 2022. This fire occurred, started in mid-April of 2022, and it occurred in Flagstaff. Flagstaff is located about two hours north of Phoenix. It is a very diverse landscape. There are mountains, there are forests, there are grasslands. It experiences high amounts of snow, there's a lot of rainfall for the monsoons. It's a very diverse landscape, and this allows for a lot of stuff to go happen. Now, one thing that's interesting about this fire since it started in mid-April is it started a little bit on the early side. Most fires start in May and occur through the end of June, and once monsoon season, it subsides. But this one started in mid-April, so it's a little bit on the early side, and I personally, found an emotional connection to this fire because I was in Flagstaff six weeks before this fire occurred and I took these pictures here and it just shows you how fast the landscape can change. But I want you to take a look at the landscape you're seeing here. It's covered in snow but look at the barren rocks, look at the trees. I want you to remember this because this will be relevant later in the presentation as it relates to some of the objectives that has happened. Now, one of the objectives for this project was to calculate the normalized burn ratio and the difference in the normalized burn ratio. And to do this, I acquired data from Landsat 8 and Landsat 9 at 30 meter spatial resolution. And I would use bands 7 and bands 5 to calculate the normalized burn ratio. Now, one thing about this data is it came atmospherically corrected, but it still needed to be calibrated. So I did that using the RATSA calculator. Now, if the data was not corrected at all, there'd be interferences from gases, aerosols, and moisture. So it's important that the data we're working with is corrected and calibrated. Now, just more about the normalized burn ratio is the near infrared minus the shortwave infrared over the near infrared, but plus the shortwave infrared. And then to calculate the difference in the normalized burn ratio, we take the pre-fire minus the post-fire. Now, one thing important thing about calculating the difference in the normalized burn ratio is you want to get your data from the same time of the year because the conditions will be similar. You don't want to be taking calculating the normalized different ratio from something during the middle of monsoon season and something in early spring. Those conditions can be completely different. You're going to have more vegetation in one, less in the other, more leaves, so on and so forth. But as you can see though, whenever an area gets burned, the short wave infrared actually has a higher reflectance, but whenever it's not burned, it has a low reflectance. That'll be something to look into. And then another objective for this project was to calculate the normalized difference vegetation index. And for this, I got the data from April of 2022 and May of 2022, one before the fire occurred and one just at the tail end of the fire. Um, it was around 95% contained whenever this day was taken. But Sentinel 2A, we were able to get 10 meter spatial resolution data for this project. And again, I did have to calibrate this data to plug it into the ArcGIS Pro raster calculator to calculate it. But the normalized difference vegetation index, the equation I used is the near infrared minus the red over near infrared plus the red or band four band eight minus band four over band eight plus band four. And healthy vegetation will reflect a high amount of near infrared light, but unhealthy vegetation will reflect a small amount of near infrared light. So look at this picture right here. You have the, the same tree. One is during the summer, one is during the fall, and it has a no sweet difference on my different vegetation index. But then healthy vegetation will have an NDVI between 0.5 and one. Medium vegetation 0.14 to 0.5, scarce vegetation 0.09 to 0.14. And we have barren ground in the study area in San Francisco Peak, so we are going to get some values. There are some clouds away from the fire, and there's even snow and ice and water in this landscape. It's a very diverse landscape. Um, the San Francisco Peaks are a much different world at 12,000 plus feet 
versus the plateau nearby, which is around five, 6,000 feet. And the fire occurred around seven to eight. There's just a lot of variety that we're about to see at the NDVI that is calculated. Now in April of 2022, the NDVI had a mean of 0 0.09505, but after the fire, it had a mean value of 0 0.09372. And as you can see on the May of 2022, you can see, I like to call it a fire star. I know that might not be the correct name, but you can see it, the fire star. And this is where the fire occurred. And as you can see right here, there's some low values too. But remember, Sunset Crater Volcano National Monument got hit. So what you're seeing from this area is the National Monument. Now, as for the normalized burn ratio in May of 2021, it had a mean value of 0 0.04204. And in May of 2022, it had a mean value of 0 0.06205. And then we would calculate the different snow ice burn ratio. And this would have a mean value of negative 0 0.01989. And for this project, since this was being calculated at the tail end of the fire, we don't expect to see any regrowth. You do see some high, uh, you do see some areas with low value, so enhanced regrowth. This would be from other fires that occurred. But as for the fire, itself, you can see the fire scar right here. And you're looking right here, this is the San Francisco Peaks. This is an area of high reflectance. Um, there was even some snow. So this is a place that we need to observe. No way it is, but it's irrelevant to the analysis of the fire, thankfully, since it occurred far away. And as you can see up here, it appears to be what used to be another fire. And you can see some little things here and there. I was in Flagstaff in January and they were doing controlled burns in that area. So there is a good chance that is what some of what we were seeing. But as for the re for the areas that were highly burnt, uh, DMBR greater than 0 0.66 is a high severity. A moderate is 0 0.27 to 0 0.66. Low severity is 0 0.1 to 0 0.27. Unburned areas is negative 0.1 to 0.1. Now this leads us heading into a soil burn severity map. And a soil burn severity is a fire induced changes in physical, chemical, and biological soil properties that impact hydrological and biological functions. So what happens is after a fire occurs, it can change the flow of the water. I've been to national parks, national monuments that have experienced fires, and there are signs saying caution, a uh, burned area prone to flooding. And through the research and speaking to rangers, it, the chain, these fires will change the flow of the water. But as for the soil burn severity map, which was done by the USDA, not me, 24% of this land was unburnt. 67% had a low soil burn severity. 8% was moderate and less than 1% was high. Now, as you're looking at the boundary of Sunset Curve Volcano Shaman, you see some unburned areas. But as I showed you in the pictures earlier, you could see all the volcanic rock. Well, it was covered in snow, but it's an outcrop. There's nothing to burn there. So I thought that was something that'd be good just to mention slash talk about later. But now I want to talk about some hydrological modeling that was done, because I was wanting to find a meaningful manner on how to define the study area. I could have gone with shape files from the county or the state on the county boundary, political boundaries. That's irrelevance. Personally, went up to Mount Lemon and did some hiking, and I was on one side of the saddle, burnt to a crisp. I was on the other side, a little burning, but relatively unburnt. And but I noticed the saddle was the two things between them, and I was thinking this might be a watershed. Like this might have influenced the flow of the fire. So that's what inspired me to do hydrological modeling which would lead to the flow direction being calculated. But one thing about this data is it was acquired by the United States Geologic Survey's national map. So, thank you. But when I concluded the hydrological modeling using ArcGIS Pro, I would get 77 watersheds and 77 streams. And I would use a flow accumulation of 500,000 through a series of trials and errors. 
And I found that this was the most appropriate for the project. Um, if I was studying a much smaller place, I would want to lower that accumulation so I can get very detailed. If I want to do a bigger area, increase it to maybe a million or so. But then we had net streams. And one important thing is I corrected the digital elevation model because there were sinks in them. And sinks can occur naturally through carbonates, glacial activity. But to my knowledge, there was none. So these were errors. So they were corrected and filled in. And while doing the hydrological modeling, I would also calculate the slope and aspect of the study area, because these were common things I have done in past classes with hydrological analysis. And while it wasn't the initial intention to lay groundwork for a future study on how, what aspects made the fire worse or better, um, this was a byproduct. But all in all, this project was successful in calculating the normalized difference vegetation index, the normalized burn ratio, and the hydrological modeling. I started a little in the early side, so we do need to be careful when it comes to climate change, because climate change will affect the rainfall, the snowfall, the wind patterns, the temperatures. So we need to see if in the big picture, if this was a little anomaly or if this is something that keeps on happening. But unfortunately for Flagstaff, the people, the wildlife, and the land itself, this is the first of three major fires. And for the tunnel fire, it's still under investigation on how it caused, but it's extremely unlikely it was caused by lightning. And why I say this is 90% of forest fires are caused by man, only 10% are naturally. But there's also more to that. I personally was in Flagstaff the day the fire had started. It was a clear day. It was pretty windy. So those were good conditions. It was probably somebody probably made an honest mistake on why this fire had started. But regardless, though, the tunnel fire would end up destroying 100 structures. 2,000 residents were forced to evacuate their homes and businesses. 700 homes were put under evacuation order. We need to take better care of our forests. We need to practice safe responsibilities in the forest because one of the fires, which I had confirmed from new sources, the pipeline fire, a guy was camping in the woods and he decided to go light some stuff on fire, even though there were no burn signs and over 25,000 acres had burned. So we need to be responsible in the forest if we were to enjoy them because it's a very delicate landscape. Thank you.